Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Vietnam War. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be taking a look at weapons, specifically pistols, used by the North Vietnamese Army, the Viet Minh, the People's Liberation Front, the National Liberation Front, Viet Cong, etc., etc. Basically every group of soldiers and civilians that were fighting in the United States and in France and the United States' allies during the Vietnam War and the Indochina War. So, um... I had to break this whole series up for weapons into different segments for the um, North Vietnamese, we'll call them, just for the sake of keeping it short. North Vietnamese, that'll encompass all the groups I just talked about, so before you go, it wasn't just the NVA that used them, it's for the sake of brevity. Um, so North Vietnamese weapons that were used, there's so many of them from so many countries. They were supplied by countries, they captured a lot of stuff, so the list is very long compared to the United States list. And we'll get into other allied countries in a little bit, um, but I'm going to try to just knock these videos out. This is the first one in the series if you're watching this at a later date and you've watched one of the other ones first. Um, so I'm going to start with pistols used. And to give you a little bit of a, ba a backstory, these capture weapons go all the way back to the uh, Japanese occupation of Indochina during the Second World War and before the Second World War going on through the French official, you know, I mean, the French still occupied it, but the Japanese had a little bit of a, a little bit of a party down there, we'll say. And there's going to be a bunch of different webs from a bunch of different countries. I'm going to put pictures up. Now, disclaimer about the photos, like I have a bunch of original photos that I put up with um, the U.S. weapons. It's very hard to find original photos from all the groups and the North Vietnamese Army. Um, just because a lot of them didn't have cameras, and if they did, uh, you probably wouldn't want to sacrifice somebody with a weapon to have a camera. So I see a lot a lot more later pictures of North Vietnamese and et cetera forces, but earlier ones are almost impossible to find, and I know you guys want this video, so I'm just going to show you a picture of the actual weapon itself and a little bit of the history. Now that that's out of the way, jeez, scared me. Stop meowing. Um... So we're going to start basically kind of, we're going to try to go in chronological order of when they would have been used. And these weapons would have been used throughout. So from when I say them, they'll be used through the end of the conflict and beyond. So the first one that we're going to be talking about is the Japanese Type 14 Nambu pistol. So this is chambered in 8mm Nambu. And um, it was, you know, obviously extensively used in World War II and um, a pretty common souvenir for United States troops in the South Pacific. And they were using them in Indochina when they occupied parts of it in the 30s and 40s. So, obviously these were captured, and um, as ammunition was scarce, they, uh, you know, they weren't used as widely as some other pistols and stuff, but they were used nevertheless. The, something you got to know about the North Vietnamese forces, etc., is that uh, they used whatever they could at first and throughout the war because supplies were extremely limited. Not many ma weapons were manufactured in Vietnam in general, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the ones that were. But about 95% of weapons used by North Vietnamese, etc., forces were foreign weapons. They were either captured or um, supplied to them. So that's another little disclaimer. <clears throat> so the Type 14, uh, we got that as our first thing on the list. And then we're going to go to some stuff that was supplied by the Soviet Union at that point. You got the Tokarev TT-33, right? One of the most common handguns, recognizable, good design. I like it personally. Uh, very common in Eastern Bloc countries, copied a lot. Um, now, what would have been seen mainly in the Vietnam War would be the actual Soviet ones and Chinese copies, um, the Type 51 and 54 of the TT-33 pistol. So, chambered at 7.62.25, or by 25, geez, 7.62 by 25 millimeter. Gotcha. We're good to go. Um, this is a nice little round, and um, the ammo was supplied to them, so it was relatively easy to get throughout the entire conflict because it was a common Soviet caliber and Eastern Bloc caliber still at that point. So, or the TT-33, and again, Soviets captured a lot of weapons in World War II from Germany, and then they supplied a lot of those because, you know, again, ammo, they had to manufacture it and stuff. It's easier to manufacture stuff that's already manufactured, so... We've got all these German weapons, what do we do with them? Oh, our little second cousin twice removed there in North Vietnam is fighting a war, an idealistic war that's on you know our behalf. So let's uh, supply them with a bunch of German PO8 Luger pistols. So these were supplied, and you see these, um, or you hear about these a lot. People find them in Vietnam. 
and there, there were less of them used um, than this pistol, the Walther P38. But both of those pistols fired a very common caliber 9mm, which could be found um, from the French and from other places and stuff. So very common pistols, both the Luger P08 and the Walther P38. Now these are Russian captured pistols, so they were marked, uh, refurbished and stuff, and then put in storage until a rainy day that they were needed, which the Vietnam War was a rainy day. So yeah, those were the weapons that were mainly supplied by the Soviet Union, um, the pistols that were in general. So now we're moving on to captured pistols from the French a little bit later on. The Soviets started supplying them when they were fighting the French and you know they kept supplying them throughout. So, so we're kind of going in this order. It's pretty close, but Soviets come first, I guess. <laughs> and uh, so then you've got the Labelle Model 1892 pistol, right? So the eight millimeter Labelle pistol cartridge. Very hard to come by, but it was still being used by French soldiers in Indochina. So these were found throughout the entire war, and people didn't know what they were. They're kind of a weird pistol, very old. And it's, it's pretty odd to me that the ruby wasn't found or you know at all during Vietnam. It's pretty interesting that the Labelle 1892 would have been found, but the ruby wouldn't have been, because the ruby was more modern at that point. So very interesting. So we've got that. We've got the French model 1935A pistol, which was basically the standard sidearm of French forces in Indochina. Um, for those of you that don't know, Indochina was the name for Vietnam before it was, um, they gained their independence from France. So um, the 1935A pistol, chambered in nine millimeter, pretty cool little gun. So now we're moving on to another Soviet supplied pistol that I um, forgot about and just remembered, the model 1895 Nagant revolver. So these were very widely used and because they were cheap, the Soviets had a ton of them because they started being manufactured in 1895. So you've got all of those all the way up to 1945. And they gave these out with ammo throughout the entire conflict, you could see. And uh, I think some, some US guys figured out that they could be suppressed or the Vietnamese did as well. And they would use them um, for that kind of stuff, some black ops stuff on both sides. Because if you can suppress a pistol, that's pretty good. Um, but again, that would have been very hard to come by a suppressor, so you'd have had to make one, but it's possible. So I got the Nagant M1890, or M1895. Now we're moving on to the Mauser C96 pistol. Now, very few of these were supplied by the Soviets because they didn't capture a whole heck of a lot of them. So most of the C96 Mausers, C96 Mauser pistols you're gonna see in Indochina and Vietnam were actually like Chinese copies and um, locally produced uh, C-96s, that was one of the weapons. I think um, North Vietnam made a few of them. And, I mean, not in numbers at all, but most of them are going to be the Chinese copies that were made in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And although not super common, they were still in force throughout the entire conflict. So that's pretty interesting as well. Um, and then we start moving forward to the U.S. involvement, you know, pretty heavily, and they would capture M1911A1s because okay, obviously you can capture ammunition and stuff and find it on dead soldiers if you get there first. And so they would use the 1911A1, plus it had you know fairly decent knockdown power, according to them. Um, 9mm at the time, I guess, wasn't as good as the 45. Um, but that's, I mean, that's not a debate, that's just kind of the mindset, you know. So they would use them against the Americans and their allies and all that stuff. So the 1911A1 pistol. And now we've got... One that came out towards the end because it was it wasn't you know designed until the mid '60s, but it was actually used quite a bit, and towards the end and everything, the Polish P64, right? So again, Eastern Bloc countries under Soviet occupation, you know, if they had extra stuff, it's like okay, well, you can move this around and get that to get that to Vietnam so they can fight the big bad United States. So the Polish P64. And then in very limited numbers, but still present, I've heard from vets and Red Vets accounts online, we were finding Czech, Czechoslovakian VZ-61 Scorpion pistols, right? Not a lot of them, but they were also used. So these are really cool little guns. And um, it was kind of cool to me that, I mean, because they were designed and made in 1961, so, you know, it would fit the time frame. And towards the end of the war, you start seeing all the pistols I just mentioned being used, so about 68 on you're gonna see a plethora of different kinds of pistols. Now these are just pistols that are known. I'm sure there's more, but um, from other countries, 
but that's the ones that are widely kind of talked about and known. And it's very interesting to me that so many cal. I mean, that must have been just a logistical nightmare, just to supply all these all these um, pistols and stuff, these sidearms, and you know keep them going and take care of them and you know get parts for them if they break. That must have just been terrible. But anyway, so kind of a a way to offset that a little bit was locally manufactured pistols. Now I don't know a whole lot about these other than if you get one, I wouldn't shoot one. Um, but a lot of U.S. forces found a lot of these homemade weapons, Viet Cong mainly, because they you know tried to be sneaky and were living among the people. So they would try to make these handguns. And here's, I mean, I'm throwing up a couple examples of some that were found. Uh, I think Ian from Forgotten Weapons is the guy to go to for that information. I'm pretty sure he's made a bunch of videos on homemade weird guns, zip guns, all that stuff. You know, some of them are just single shot guns that, you know, like this one that are um, just weird and oh my God, but all it takes is one shot to take a human life. So yeah. All right. So I believe that's it for the pistols, the, the main, the mainly used ones that you're going to, you're going to hear about. And maybe you can find pictures of them. I certainly am having a hard time doing that. A lot easier to find U.S. pictures with all these weapons, or all the weapons in the U.S. ones. All right, now you see why this is going to take a while. If I did the whole video on uh, every weapon that the North Vietnamese and Center Forces used, it would take me over an hour. So I'm just going to kind of end this one on the note of here's the pistols that were widely used by these forces. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Um, yeah, I enjoy making these videos. They're kind of cool because then I get to learn some stuff that I didn't know before. I didn't know that the P64 and Scorpion were used as widely as they were, but you know, that's, that's news to me. So I'm learning as well as you guys are. And yeah, I'll keep making this series. The series is gonna be almost endless. Um, I'll probably get to as many topics as I possibly can. Eventually, just try to be patient and bear with me. I'm gonna try to knock these videos out, the North Vietnamese, et cetera, weapons fairly soon. But I figured I'd just get a roll on it with this one. So, all right. Thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate it. If you have not already, hit the like button on this video or the little thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. And consider supporting the channel on um, PayPal. You can do that. There's a link right in the description. And uh, if not, that's totally fine. I appreciate you watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you got any questions, I'll try to answer them. I'm not an expert by any means. I just love doing historical research and finding things out and kind of passing them on. To maybe spark an interest, somebody can go research deeper and learn more and find your niche of what you really like. So that's the purpose of these videos and to kind of set the record straight on a lot of stuff for the Vietnam War because there's a lot of misconceptions about it. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you on the next video.